Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and welcome to my channel. This is going to be a kind of a review of this really awesome free-to-play educational uh, browser-based game called GeoGuessr. You may have done this before, you may have played this before, but if you haven't, today I'm going to tell you all about this. So essentially, what is GeoGuessr? It is a very, very simple game based on maps, on Google Maps specifically, where it asks you to guess your destination, or I guess your location that is, uh, giving you just a little bit of hints. I'm going to show you, I'm going to play th with you, and we're going to try to see how many points we get. And if you want, you can try to beat my score later on. So here we are. I don't actually know where we are. Uh, snow. There's a lot of snow. And this is actually obviously, uh, oh hi, there's a little girl here. This is obviously from Google um, 360 camera, where you kind of find yourself in this location. Uh, maybe Olympic Village? This kind of looks like an Olympic Village. And so here, your job is to essentially guess where you are based on a few hints here and there, including the writing. Now, this is in German, I think. And... I'm going to take a wild guess that this is either Austria or it's Switzerland, the German part of Switzerland, and we are somewhere in some kind of a, um, some sort of a ski village, basically. There's a little, there's a, not a little, but there's a person there staring at the Google, uh, Google camera, and we have some more information here, <laughs> name of the, I guess this restaurant, and also some more German writing. And there's some English here as well. So this is obviously for tourists. So now, based on this, I need to make a decision. I need to go to this map and try to decide where exactly I am. I'm going to go with um, a location close to... I'm going to say this is Switzerland. I'm going to go with somewhere right here uh, on the border of Germany. So maybe, just maybe this is like right here. I'll just take a guess. And this is how this game works, essentially. You take a guess, and then you get points. And look at that. I was only 63 kilometers away. This is actually one of the closest guesses I've had so far. So it was actually here, but I think... No, it was actually here, and I guessed it, that it was here. All right, awesome. So I already made uh, 4,793 points. Now, this is such an awesome tool. Not just for, you know, not just for a geography class, not just for a class that deals with locations, but uh, for a teacher that wants to essentially uh, uh, teach students how to think logically, how to use situational awareness, how to basically analyze the situation based on what you see. So here we have these tracks. This is clearly some sort of a um, foresty area, uh, small highway, actually a, almost like a one-way road even, in the middle of the forest. Uh, I, don't re I can't even start guessing where this is. So here, just based on maybe trees, you can based on environment, based on, on on environmental sciences, you can kind of try to guess where you are. So can we actually figure out what sort of forest this is? So I think these are birch trees, possibly aspen trees, which are slightly different. Uh, but I'm going to guess this is birch trees, which are usually typical to Europe, specifically Eastern Europe. There's a lot of um, birch trees in Eastern Europe, but I need a, I need more hints. I need to maybe keep going a little bit more until I see, oh, there was a sign. There's a sign here, maybe based on the language, we can kind of see if we can guess that way. Okay, this is kind of hard to see. So let's, uh, let's just keep going. This is only around two out of five. And I'm going to keep doing this until I finally figure out where I am. Now, uh, this game can be played with a friend. This can be uh, played with um, even a partner, or you can actually compete with each other. Uh, so this is where they cut down trees, so this is some sort of a lumber camp, maybe. Or possibly an illegal, illegal uh, camp, where they cut illegal trees. Um, but that's all I have. This is actually going to be a very tough guess. There's really no other hints other than trees and a simple, very, very flat area with nothing else. There's a few uh, power cables, so there's obviously some sort of a settlement nearby. Uh, but now I have to make a guess. So how would I use this in class? How would I use this in education? Well, obviously, I would have students compete because there's actually a challenge mode where you can compete against others using point system. I need to take... It's time for me to take a guess. I'm going to say this is Eastern Russia. I'm going to say it's somewhere right here. Boom. Make a guess. Far away. It was actually Finland. So I got like 182 points because I was 5,000 kilometers away. So... This okay. This was kind of northeastern Europe, so I was I was pretty close in my analysis, but I was way off because Russia is a very big place, so it's easy to make a mistake. And Finland does have very similar forests to to Russia, 
Here we go with a slightly different location. Now this is a farmland, very flat farmland. Here we have a car, so maybe you can kind of take a look at the car and try to see if you can maybe use that as a, as a part of your analysis. Uh, there's a driver there. Uh, I think it's a, I think it's a white guy actually. So <laughs> there's a bit of maybe um, ethnicity involved, uh, ethnical guesses. But I'm just gonna keep going. So these types of farms I've seen in Canada many, many times. This is not a typical European farm. Uh, they don't tend to build um, these types of, I forget what they are actually called, silos, I guess. These types of silos. These farms are very typical to Northern America, to North America specifically. So this could be either US or Canada, I think. So this is, to me, this is North America. Uh, the way the farm is organized, the way it's located. Oh, here we have this, some signs here. The way it's basically positioned is also kind of North American. Uh, yeah, that's English. And we have a sign that's blue that will tell us where we are. Dundas, Glengarry, Stormont. Now, this could be actually many different places. Um, I've heard of a place called Dundas in Canada. I don't really know where this is. So once again, I'm going to have to guess because technically this could also be England. This could be in England, uh, but uh, we need to we need to kind of see if we can maybe guess again and possibly go with I'm going to go with Canada, my homeland, Canada, and um, I'm going to go with possibly somewhere in Ontario, a very big province of Ontario. Let's just go with somewhere right here, um, northwest of the lakes. And the answer is all right. So the actual uh, I chose Thunder Bay, but the actual answer was very close to Ottawa. So it was Canada, but far away from where I where I chose, uh, closer to Montreal, closer to Ottawa. Uh, so essentially, that's the game in a nutshell. We have two rounds to go. Uh, let's see if we can do a better job this time. You can actually see the shadow of the Google car this time. And um, once again, Flatland. So this is actually, I f personally find this game super fun. It's very, very interesting to try to guess a location based on any kind of a hint that you can get. And and technically, I mean, not many people would consider this to be a game, but it is a game. It, it is definitely a game. There is point system. There is um, a way for you to lose against someone. There is definitely a challenge here. There's definitely, um, okay, this is in kilometers. So it's either Europe or Canada. So right away I can decide that this is either Europe or Canada or possibly South America, but it, oh, okay, there's palm trees. So maybe this is also South America or, or maybe Africa actually, <laughs> or Australia. I don't actually know anymore. Let's go look for the sign. Um, but yeah, the, to me, this is actually super, super awesome. This is clearly a game that is very educational, very entertaining. It, um, okay, this is, I think this is Portuguese. I, I believe this is Portuguese, which means that because of the palm tree, this is Brazil. So it's very likely to be Brazil. Brazilian flatlands. What do we know about Brazil? Brazilian flatlands where there aren't really that many, um, not many rainforesty areas. So either right here or possibly somewhere here. I'm going to take a guess that it's northeastern Brazil right about here. Take a guess. Let's see. Oh, it was in that other area. I was so close. It was one of the other. But that's essentially how this would work. Um, I personally love to verbalize my thoughts, and this is what I'm doing right now. And if I was a teacher using this in any kind of a class, either elementary class, middle school class, um, you know, class on science, this would be basically how I would have my students do it. I would have them verbalize their ideas, verbalize their thoughts, maybe even work in pairs, trying to figure out things as they go along, as they kind of move around, but also give uh, give people a time limit, because without a time li limit, this would be maybe kind of hard to, uh, okay, for sale. This is a red for sale sign, this is American. I think North America uses red for sale signs. Um, but basically, yeah, I, I would have students to just kind of uh, go through this by themselves, in possibly or in pairs, but always verbalize, or always reflect on what they're finding, on what they're seeing, because this is how you actually learn about the world. You could be anywhere in the world right now and you have to figure out where you are, simply based on pictures, simply based on what you see around you. No parking, anytime. Red stop sign. This is North America, I'm just not sure where. Uh, okay, these green signs I've only seen in Canada. I think this might once again be Canada, but I don't know where. 
there might be some uh, US cities that do have green signs, but I've never really seen green signs in, in US. Uh, but I'm going to take a look at that sign right here as well. Where was it? There's a sign right here. There we go. What does this say? Uh, George, oh, George Washington. Okay, I was wrong. This is definitely the US. George Washington Boulevard. There's not a single boulevard in Canada named George Washington. So, can this be... Can this be actually somewhere in Eastern US? Let's go with... Uh, how about just, you know, how about somewhere in DC? Let's go for Washington DC. Well, I just assume that this is actually very, very easy. It's Washington DC. And the answer is... Dum -dum -dum -dum. Okay, a little bit off. But we still got 3,700 points. So this was actually... Close to Cleveland. It was right here. Alright, so let's uh, see. We got 11,469 points. Um, try to beat me. I'm sure it's not very difficult. I, I did uh, get three answers relatively wrong. Especially this one here and this one here. Uh, but the my first guess was pretty good. Now, essentially, this is how the game works. There is also a pro version of the game, but... The only thing you get with the pro version is that you get to build your own maps and you also get to put your own pins. So unless you really get competitive about this and want to like have challenges against other people, I don't know if it's worth it. Also, there's no advertisements, but I have a ad, ad block, so I don't really get any ads anyway. Other than that, GeoGuessr is absolutely awesome. It's definitely worth a try if you've never tried it before. It is actually very addictive, so be careful. I spent hours and hours and hours on this. Even uh, sometimes when I should be working, I'll actually be playing this. And the challenge mode is really awesome because here you can actually set your own challenge and then challenge someone else by sending them a link and you'll be competing against them uh, by, you know, essentially you're competing for points and uh, you can invite many other people to join you. And this is essentially how I would personally do this in class because it is, it is very, very, very fun. And uh, that's it for a GeoGuessr. Do give this a try. It's definitely worth it. It's free, it's awesome, and it works on any computer or even on your iPad, on your phone as well. Uh, that's all I wanted to say about this particular video and then this particular video game, I guess. It's not really a video game. It's more of a browser-based browser, browser -based educational game. And um, if you're a teacher or if you're a student or if you just like having fun online, this is definitely a must try. Thank you so much for watching. And if you still haven't subscribed, click that subscribe button right now because there's so many more educational videos coming in the future. I'll see you all in the next video where we're going to do something else educational or possibly use a video game to learn something really, really cool. Give you guys later. And as always, bye-bye.